Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to episode number 35 of my FIFA 15 DC United career mode. And if you guys remember in the last two games, we actually started off pretty well. We got two wins uh, and a shutout, and shutouts on both games actually. So I think we've uh, started off perfectly. And here's hoping that we can continue our good run of form at the moment. Anyways, guys, uh, while we're looking at the screen here, we're facing New England Revolution. I have a couple of uh, announcements, so to sp uh, so to speak, I guess. Uh, first of all, um, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've actually been uploading uh, videos daily, and I was actually trying to see if that's a possibility in the future. And unfortunately, at the moment, uh, that doesn't seem very likely. As I've mentioned in previous videos before, I'm actually starting uh, classes up again, or I guess a class technically. And even though it is like an online class, um, just the fact that uh, the way uh, my work schedules, my work schedule is at the moment, and the fact that I uh, will need time to study, and I already have a reduced amount of time, because uh, I actually work pretty late, guys, and uh, get up really early, so uh, I already have a short amount of time to get in whatever it is I need to do. And so, unfortunately, uh, I won't be as long as I, I should say actually as long as I'm in a class I won't be able uh, to basically load videos daily uh, but once uh, classes end then I'll be able to resume that so just an FYI guys what I will be keeping though is this nice format of just having two games uh, per video because like I said I've been wanting to shorten my videos for a while now I usually hit uh, the 20 to 30 minute mark um, but I actually want to reduce it and, and my goal like I said uh, many times before is to get it between 15 to 20 Anyways, um, like I said, I'm going back to uh, weekends only, uh, but I'm going to include Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so you will be getting about six videos a week. And here we have a nice attempt to long go, but unfortunately, uh, it was too simple enough for Brad Knighton uh, to take care of it. Anyways, and here we see that New England Revolution are actually the ones uh, who are actually making a lot more uh, attacking uh, have more attacking opportunities here and what a nice save there by my center back uh, Bobby uh, excuse me not Bobby Boswell Steve Birnbaum getting in the way and deflecting that shot very nicely there and like I've mentioned previously in my videos I am fairly decent at playing D I'm not as uh, uh, well off in the attacking portion but if I uh, can hold my opponents to zero goals then there's a better chance of me uh, getting a victory. And here we see a nice save on the line by one of our defenders, and uh, one of the New England Revolution players actually got caught off sides. And here we see New England again. All this uh, half has actually been New England guys, and they were actually pretty dangerous. I feared that I was actually going to concede at some point here because they just threw everything that they had on the attack. And so that's how the first half will end, basically... A lot of possession from New England, but obviously we're never going to win the possession battle. Um, actually, I'm actually interested in, in hearing if you guys, uh, uh, well, I guess what level, first of all, you guys typically play FIFA. And uh, what's the highest level where you uh, can keep m the majority of the possession uh, in a game? I obviously, I mean, even in semi-pro, I mean, not semi-pro, professional, I don't think I've even uh, had more possession than my opponent, but... Uh, I tend to think that possession is overrated sometimes, and it's it's hard. And it's interesting, I guess, for me to say that considering I'm an admirer of Barcelona and their style of play. But uh, my main gripe is that uh, what you do with the possession is what really matters. So even if you have like 10% of the ball, if you can get one solid attack in that 10%, then you guys should be good. Anyways, like I said, we see here with New England, and we got saved by the post, guys. And I believe that was Teal Bunbury. He took the shot and it deflects just off the post. And he's clearly unhappy. And it looks like Juan Agudelo is coming in on the second half. And it was in here. We finally had our, uh, our own attack here. Nice pass. Unfortunately, Nicky D can't connect. And it's an easy save for Brad Knighton. Passes it to Hall. Here we go, the nice pass to Luperto. Luperto's going to go by, him, by himself, actually, and he gets clipped. And I was hoping it'd be a red card, guys, to be honest, but a yellow card is probably more more accurate, at least for this type of ball. He wasn't the last man, so obviously a uh, direct red 
isn't exactly what it was called for, but it's it's in basically the interpretation of the ref. And I just noticed that guy, uh, that uh, Barnes actually is still playing in this game. Uh, I don't think I've seen him play for the New England Revolution in a long time. I'm not even sure he's still on the team, guys. Uh, but any New England Revolution fans, uh, players, players, excuse me, fans who are watching, uh, please let me know because I haven't seen him for a while. I know he was very big about two or three years ago. He was actually one of the talking points of uh, the New England Revolution team. I guess his athleticism was uh, to thank for that, but I haven't heard from him in a long time. Anyways, and Franklin, here on the corner, he's going to go for the service. And Luperto's going <laughs> to... He wanted to connect, but uh, that is actually one for the blooper reel, guys, because that was just horrible. Uh, it was a wasted opportunity, to be frank. Anyways, and Brennan's going to put it back in play. And here we see with New England, which could be the final attack of the game here. Oh, and I actually now remember the fact that I just uh, wanted you guys to see uh, the annoying uh, tactic that uh, New England Revolution is actually using. They're just holding the ball. They're going for the tie, which is ridiculous because they're, uh, they're the home team. They should be going for the win, in my opinion, but I guess they'll settle for the tie. I guess they're afraid of us. Um, but this this is those one of those annoying things that I hate about uh, playing sometimes when the computer gets a little uh, bitchy about it and uh, just tries to <laughs> keep the ball away from me. And as you guys can see, I'm horrible at keep at taking the ball away. Um, and that's going to finish the game, guys. It ends 0-0. We keep our clean sheet. However, uh, we drop two points. Or I guess I shouldn't say drop because technically New England... Uh, we're the better team for the most part. So maybe, in retrospect, the tie is probably beneficial for us. Anyways, and then we see here that our next opponent is the Seattle Sounders, who, as I mentioned many times before already, they're actually going to get their stadium in FIFA 16. At least that's what I've been reading. I don't know if um, they went back on it. If you guys know anything or any updates, please let me know in the comment section. But I think they're actually having other stadium in FIFA 16, if I recall correctly, and I believe it's called uh, Quest Field. It used to be called CenturyLink Field, or is it the other way around? I can't quite remember, guys. I just one of the things I hate about MLS is uh, the fact that their sponsors, um, their sponsors are are the, or they're basically the sponsors' names are in the stadium itself. So. Um, I remember back in the day when FC Dallas' stadium used to be called Pizza Hut Park, and now I believe it's called Toyota Park. Um, and then, I, like I said, there's a whole situation in Seattle there where it used to be called CenturyLink Field, and now it's Quest Field. Or is it the other way around? I, like I said, I don't remember, guys, and I, I apologize for that because I should know. I've watched enough MLS, and I've, I've, you know, I've delved enough into the league that I should know these things, but I guess, you know, these little tidbit things here and there, uh, one, I guess, tends to forget here. And I guess in theory I could have just looked it up before I made the video. So shame on me, guys. Shame on me. And here we see a nice. Uh, there's no Obafemi Martins and no Clint Dempsey. So uh, I would like to say this is a weekend because I don't have too much. If I was Seattle, I wouldn't have too much confidence in Chad Barrett. And we see here that we already stupidly give away the ball to Brad Evans. Brad Evans gives it to Lee Sang Hup. And Lee Sang Hup's going to take a shot. And just as I criticized Seattle's weakened attack, we actually go down 1-0. Nice stop there by uh, the Seattle Sounder player. And a nice shot on target as well. Uh, Gallese should have done better though, guys. And in, in fact, my whole defense should have done better. It was it was a scrappy play. But it's, it's one of those things, you know, when you start off the game, as the saying goes, or at least from what I've been told, the most important minutes of each half is the first uh, 15 minutes and the last five of each half. Those are typically the most dangerous uh, chances where one can score a goal. And because, obviously, in the beginning of a half, uh, you tend to uh, try to get back into the rhythm of the game or get in the rhythm of a game, depending if it's the first half. And then, obviously, the last five minutes, because uh, you're gearing down, uh, you just want to wait till the ref blows a whistle and so you kind of let your guard down a little bit so that's why first 15 and last five these are the key 
a moments, and here we see uh, that we're actually going to go with our own counterattack. Uh, after Seattle manages manages to uh, basically stack up on our side of the field, we do a nice clever uh, counterattack here, and Ariete goes for the shot, but it was a nice save there by Stefan Fry. And I guess this is my uh, my uh, strategy for this game at least, because um, Seattle's going to go out all attack, so I'm hoping that I can surprise them in the counter. Unfortunately, I don't think I have the speed uh, to make a successful counterattack happen at the moment. And here you go with Chris Rolf, and nothing happens, nothing comes up from it. And here you go on the other side. What a dangerous play, and we're trying to get the ball out of our own half, guys. And Ariete gets the ball again, and I think he's going to pass it to Luperto. And Luperto's going to get it, he's going to go. He's going to go for the goal, he's going to go for the shot, he cuts in, and the defender reads the play well, and nothing uh, in stops the attack before anything serious can happen. And here we see the about the last few minutes of the first half. And that's how the first half's going to end, guys. The first half ends. And we're 1-0 down, actually. And had this been a professional, I wouldn't be worried because um, most of the time, even when I go down a goal, I tend to at least get a draw. However, since I bumped up the level now, and I know I'm mentioning this so many times, guys, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys are irritated by the fact that I keep bringing it up. But anyways, the fact that I've bumped it up, um, I'm a little worried um, this team is obviously a lot better than me right now at the moment. And so we're going to try to make, uh, to go for the equalizer. And I'm going to make a couple changes here. Areta obviously is going to go. Um, and Farfan is going to come in as well. And here we see uh, creating our own counterattack. What a nice pass to Augie there. The sub who just came in, he's getting his uh, jersey pulled. And he goes for the shot. But Stefan Fry again comes very big for the Seattle Sounders. And <laughs> fortunately, he is a wall that I can't seem to break guys he's a wall that I cannot go through but let's see we still have plenty of time here and Michael Farfan goes for the service and what a dangerous play there unfortunately the Seattle Sanders managed uh, manages to get the ball correctly and here we see that uh, Kenny Cooper actually had an opportunity uh, but my goalkeeper guy yes it was just a tad quicker than he was at getting the ball and here we see with Lee Stamp, Lee sent to a zero. A zero goes for the shot. What a nice shot! Unfortunately, not on target, which is good for us actually. So I should say fortunate for us, but unfortunate for Seattle, obviously. And here we see another counterattack. Of uh, Seattle Sanders are just destroying us here, in our own side of the field. Uh, goes for the center, and Cooper tries to go for it, and then Akira or Azira goes for the rebound, and just can't get it on target, guys. We are actually. Really lucky that we're not down by another goal. We are sweating here and we're hoping uh, to get an equalizer. And at this moment, I'm just hoping we don't get scored on for a second time. And we see what Luperto, Luperto is going to go by himself. He actually has a, a bit of pace here. He's going to go for the cutback. And again, not on frame, guys. The uh, the post actually becomes a savior at this moment. And here we go with Aguilar. He's going to center the ball to Zalalem. Zalalem can't get to it. And a simple save there by Stefan Fry. And here we see, we're going to go for a counterattack. Uh, this end, the end of this se this half actually has been all us at the moment. Michael Farfan is going to go. He's all alone. He has the opportunity, and he just hits it slightly wide. He went with his left when he actually should have gone with his right. But, again, guys, the goal seems to elude us. And Luperto is obviously disappointed. A distraught there. He thought we had the equalizer. We should have had the equalizer, to be honest. And here we see the last few minutes of the game. Uh, Zulalem finds Aguilar. Aguilar's going to center the ball. He's going to find Luperto. Luperto's going to header it. And just a little too much power over there. And it just goes over the bar. We've been having so many opportunities lately. We just can't seem to finish them though. And here he, uh, Seattle puts it back in play. And here we go with the last few minutes. Means to Alonso. Alonso to Azira. Azira finds Barrett. Barrett's going to go to Alonso. Alonso shoots and that makes it 2. 2-0 two guys. We are losing 2-0 and I, obviously that's a game. There's no way I have enough time to make a comeback. Well, not in the 90th minute at least. And the Seattle, the Seattle crowd who came all the way from Washington is obviously ecstatic with joy. Uh, their trip 
uh, was definitely a uh, paid for or at least like it was it was uh, it was justified I should say uh, in part to the win so they were gonna leave and go home happy while we're gonna just uh, mellow in our first loss of this season and uh, I'm clearly gonna have a talk with my team and, and see what uh, we can fix here and I see that Atoche uh, seems to be slightly injured and that's the game guys 2-0 loss here so two victories a draw and a loss and I believe here I'm going uh, to make uh, to zoom in here and that's it for this video guys thank you for watching uh, and tune in tomorrow for the next game